All right, that's me. Old school. Snorlax. Um, okay, so I was gonna, I guess, walk it through the beginning of the game. <laughs> so in like the normal Pokemon game, this is Professor Oak, and he like introduces you to um, your very first Pokemon and everything, and he's like very bookish and grandfatherly and like very nice and whatever. And this is him <laughs> in the new game, yeah, like Silver Fox vamped up. <laughs> but the intro is basically still the same, so he's like, here, you can have one of three Pokemon, pick which one, and you'll get started, and then you'll collect them for me, basically, and put them in the Pokedex. Because he's been studying them for, like, de decades, and only has three. <laughs> Alright, so then you get to pick your avatar, and... <laughs> Like, the Niantic team needs to work on their, like, clothing style a little bit. <laughs> pretty you, can, you can customize your avatar. What? That's pretty hip. Yeah. This little... I wear those like, pants every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Me high socks. <laughs> Rock me. And so then you have the opportunity to catch your first Pokemon. And so usually, it's just one of these three, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charmander. But... One of the very first Easter eggs in the game is if you run away from them for like a few blocks, but like actually you have to physically run away from them, Pikachu will appear and you can get Pikachu as your first Pokemon. Wow. It's like, oh yeah. Good. So what's the difference between those Pokemon and Pokemon? Pokemon? I don't know, but like Pikachu is the best? No. Yes. No. no, it's um, no. So it's all based on type. Um, no, Bulbasaur is the best. <laughs> What? So it's all based on type, so like, they're all a, a different element. So Bulbasaur is grass, Charmander is fire, Squirtle is water, Pikachu is thunder. So basically you just pick which one you identify with most. Oh. So you pick hybrid. Wait, grass is an element? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, so, that's in the part of um, yes. <laughs> So is psychic. That one is fun. Fighting. Fighting is an element? Yes. They're, they're not like elements, they're like um, Type. categories, types, yeah. All right, so after that, you have the most important choice in your life. After you've been catching Pokemon for a while, you get to level five. You get to pick which team to be on <laughs> in the game. So you take risk. This is a big deal. Are you kidding? <laughs> You're on Valor? Of course you are. Yeah. <laughs> right, so we have Team Valor is red over there. Team Ooh. Instinct is yellow. Boo, also, thank you. And Team Mystic is blue. <laughs> And obviously, if you have any brains, you choose Team Mystic. <laughs> they're the coolest. Um, so I think the idea in the future is going to be that they're going to um, make it so that depending on which team you're on, you get some different like boosts to your gameplay, basically. So um, like Team Valor, the red team, is all about like strength. So they're probably going to get extra like points in battles or something like that. Team Instinct is all about like how Pokemon are like born or something like that. So they're, you're going to get extra points for hatching eggs. That's a thing you can do in the game. And for Team Mystic, um, it's all about the evolution. So people, this is all speculation, of course, but people think you'll get extra points when you like evolve Pokemon or whatever. Um, so that'll be interesting to see in the future. Yes, Rick. Were there teams in the original Pokemon stuff? Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, not not like this. Um, so they had to kind of revamp the whole system. So before, like, um, gyms used to be kind of like teams. They would have a set, set number of trainers and, like, um, usually a set type. And you would go, like, to the gym and battle and get a reward. But now, since there are gyms everywhere, they kind of had to change that. So um, this is a totally different system than what it used to be. Also, apparently, um, depending on the team that you are, you're only going to be able to catch that the specific uh, legendary but, bird. Seriously? On the team that you're in. No. So that's why you take team. Well, that's that's no, also. Zapdos is the best one. It's going to be implemented as well with the uh, sharing your po or exchanging Pokemon, so that will encourage that, that as well. Is that for sure? That uh, they that sort of talked about it in Comic Con, but they didn't say much. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, also, Niantic is like notoriously bad for putting out any sort of press releases or any really communication about the game. They issued their like first um, 
response to like anybody's um, like comments that they put on the site like a week ago, maybe. So the game's anyone. been out for like two months. What? They don't have anyone. They're looking for someone to do that job, but they don't. Oh, really? They don't have a person to like reach out for like their oh. users. That's why they're being really interesting. <laughs> See, this should be on YouTube. What? This should be on YouTube. You can reference the video. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> all right, so you've chosen Team Mystic. And so now, basically, all you have to do is you go around, you battle, and you get gyms. You take control of gyms. Um, I'm hoping this is going to be expanded in the future, too, because basically right now, um, if you see like an empty gym, you can add a Pokemon, and basically that Pokemon like defends um, your spot at the gym. And if you get beaten enough, you get kicked out, and then somebody else puts their Pokemon in. Um, so like when your Pokemon is in the gym, you're not actually doing any fighting. You, um, it's only the challengers who come to the gym who actually like see that screen on the left. Um, and I actually found these two pictures separately, but I think the Vaporeon, the blue Pokemon, same one in both of them. <laughs> so I <had> fun back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So you're doing that. Um, you're probably also doing a lot of um, like collecting Pokemon and using Pokestops. So Pokestops are how you like collect items in the game. So to catch Pokemon, you throw Pokeballs at them, right? So sometimes you burn through them pretty quickly because you can't catch it if you're really bad. Like, <laughs> Um, so if you go to a Pokestop, you like click on it and uh, spin it, and it'll give you Pokeballs or potions or stuff like that. But the way you cannot like fight against them to make them more weaker and then they're easier to catch? No. So that, that used to be how it was in the, the game mode. Yeah. Oh, that's but not the game anymore. No. They might implement it that way. Oh, really? Oh, they might. Um, yeah. That seems like it would be a lot of work though. Well, that's um, fun. Yeah, it totally would. But so right now, um, you have like a couple of different ways to like try to maximize your odds of catching the Pokemon. One is um, so it has this circle on it. Oh, I don't have any pictures of catching the Pokemon, but it's got a circle on it that kind of indicates the ease of catching it. And if you throw your Pokeball and it hits it in the middle of that circle, you're more likely to catch it. Um, there are different types of Pokeballs, like there's the basic one, there's great balls, ultra balls, and you gain them as you gain levels. Um, so like, ultra balls will make it way easier to catch Pokemon of like higher levels. And um, they have a new thing called raspberries that you can like, <laughs> it's an item that you can like click on it to feed it to the Pokemon basically, <laughs> and it like slows it down and makes it friendlier or something. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so that's how you catch Pokemon, and then they also have this egg hatching thing, um, which I was talking about. So you incubate the eggs, and you have to walk the distance that's indicated on the screen. Um, if you drive, or like go, I think it's over like maybe four or five, maybe six like miles an hour, it'll register that and it won't count. So you have, have to actually like walk or jog, or like skateboard. Um, yeah. So one of the annoying things I found was it wasn't actually tracking, like walking. And does the app have to be active for it to do that? Yes. That's really annoying. Yeah. So there's no like standby mode or anything like that. You have to have the app open and on your phone for it to track. Yeah. Or scan Okay. Also, it only tracks like every five minutes or so. Like it's not a constantly tracking. Well, it's not like live updates, yeah. but it does count. So it measures your distance. So let's say you're going a straight line, it will count more than if you go on a straight line and take like a left, because then it will count point A to point C instead oh, of really? point yeah. Just, oh, yeah. So you will lo lose distance. Stephen, do you want to come up here and just do this presentation? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so there are two kilometer eggs, five kilometer eggs, and ten kilometer eggs. Um, the more kilometers they are, the like better Pokemon you'll get from hatching them. Um, like the two kilometer ones are really shitty Pokemon. Um, really bad Pokemon. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so like you're doing this, and so you're probably around level like 14, 15, and it kind of starts to get pretty boring. I'm not gonna lie. It's a little old. 
and you're like, I don't want to walk anymore. Like, I'm wasting all this time. Like, there was one night I went out and I was like, okay, I'm just going to take a half hour walk along the Park Theorem. And I ended up being outside for two and a half hours. <laughs> I mean, it was okay, but like, I got home and I was like, oh my god, like, my forearm hurts, I'm holding my phone up, like, my shoulders hurt, my hips hurt. Like, <laughs> it's too much work, right? Okay. So, oh, I see. So, like, one of the strategies to kind of, like, increase your efficiency when catching Pokemon, what? No, no. <laughs> Bending the rules slightly. Um, <laughs> perhaps violating the terms of service of the game, maybe. Um, is to use sites like Pokevision, which um, unfortunately was taken down after the, the new update. Um, but, and Pokeradar, which is not down which I don't know why, but it's not. Um, so the idea is that they are like real-time maps and they tell you where Pokemon are, basically. <laughs> so like the little timers there are like how long it is until they'll fade out the numbers underneath them. And you can like sort it by whatever Pokemon you're trying to find. So like, let's say you're like, I really want a Charizard. So you type in Charizard and it'll sh there aren't any in the city at the moment, but they would pop up on the screen and then you could like drive really quickly over there in your car or something. But, see that, that's unless you have this hack that I'm about to show you. Alright, so let's just hop over to Xcode. Okay, I'm actually going to exit this and reopen it just so you can see just how easy it is right here. Okay. So you're going to create a new project, a single view application. You can name it whatever you want. I usually go for PokeMap. Create the folder. Okay. My phone is already connected and that's literally, well, that's about half of what you have to do. It's just open Xcode. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is you hook your phone up, and under the device selection here, you select your iPhone, and hit play. And so it's gonna build the app, blah, blah. Um, if this is the first time you're doing it, you're gonna get a bunch of pop-ups that are like, you need a developer certificate, you need to like add your Apple account, and it, it just like leads you through the steps, basically. Um, the only thing you'll have to do is on your phone, you'll have to trust your account as a developer basically, um, but it'll tell you how to do that too. And so now we see it's running Pokemap on my iPhone. It looks like this. It is a white screen. That's it. White screen. Okay. And so then what we're going to do is we're going to open up this panel here. And this little arrow right here is the GPS arrow. All right. And so you can see we, they already have a bunch of like um, pre- Made destinations. Um, we can I could hook up my phone and do this at the same time. All right. So like, it can be in Tokyo, Japan, and this is going to work. So I'm going to open Google Maps now, and the app is still running on my phone, but it's minimized. Um, okay. Let's see how this goes. There we go, see? We're in Tokyo, Japan! Yay! <laughs> All right. Nice. Yeah. Traveling the speed of light. What? Traveling at the speed of light. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we're going to go back to Expo. And back to the computer. Um, so that's one of the things, is that when you're um, like spoofing your location, you can actually unplug your phone from the computer and you'll stay where you've um, selected your location to be, which is pretty cool. Okay, you're like, that's great, but if, if I go to Japan, I'm going to get banned in the game. Um, you will, because that's happened to me. <laughs> I tried to go there before Japan was, um, <laughs> before it was released in Japan, so that might have been part of the issue. But, okay, so I'm going <laughs> to... The yeah. trick on that is if you want to do that, just disable your GPS and wait sort of like the average time 
that an airplane will take to that place from the right. last known location so that we don't bend you. Well, right. But like, well, who's going to wait like 17 hours <laughs> or whatever? I mean, if you really want to. They, there are a few Pokemon that are exclusive to certain countries. So um, Japan is one of the countries yeah. that has a, an exclusive Pokemon. I just think I read somewhere that uh, some guy who went to Peru, mm -hmm. and he's Peruvian, and mm -hmm. uh, he commented on that same fact, how yeah. he can't find the same certain uh, creatures in Peru than in the States. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there is one guy so far who's collected every single Pokemon there is to collect that's been released. Um, and he uh, got like flown to Japan and to, um, do you know where the other one is? France. Uh, France. Really? Yeah, there was one in France there. Australia. The mine one? Yeah. yeah, so he got flown all around the world basically to collect these last few Pokemon <laughs> because he was like so devoted and tweeted about it or something. He's a software developer. Oh really? He probably cheated. <laughs> yeah. Of course he did. There's no other way to get all of it. It's called hacking. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So you're like, okay that's great, but like these locations are not where I want to be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the interwebs. We're gonna go to a site called GPX POI file generator. All right, and so all you have to do, super easy, uh, if I can figure out your Mac touchpad, is, oh my god. <laughs> all right, fine, whatever. We're going to be in the middle of Kirkwood Forest. <laughs> <laughs> so you drop your pin. You can, you can be a little more <laughs> discriminating with where you put it. And you hit update, and it's going to pop in the latitude and longitude into these boxes right here. Go to the very, very bottom, click on the Mac button, and then download the file. Ooh, it's going to download as a text file. That's a new feature, and I don't know why to do it. But so we're going to open it. And then I usually rename them. Oh. Um, Call it. Ah. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know how to use this. <laughs> okay. They call it forest. I'm going to get rid of the text extension. Use.gpx. Awesome. Now we're going to go back to Xcode. And then at the bottom here, you see you can add a GPX file to your project. So you're going to go to wherever that file was, click on it, add it, and finish. And so now it's been added, and so then all you have to do is click on it. And now you're there, and I will prove it to you in Google Maps again. Um, <laughs> literally in the middle of the forest. So that's the next step. So, okay, now we know that it worked. So, why don't we open up a little Pokemon and see if anything happens to be around there. <laughs> so the idea is kind of that you like start getting a feeling for where like there are clumps of Pokestops, let's say, or, um, or like where you know you can find really rare Pokemon and stuff like that, and then you just go there and catch them, and then you're done. And there is nothing in the right. It's awful. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> you're probably like, where the hell is she? <laughs> yep. So there is nothing. But that was expected of being in the middle of the forest. So, okay. That place was a bust, but now we know. So we're going to go back. Now you're like, okay, that's great. 
but like what if I'm two feet away from the cookie stuff? Or what if like those eggs, right? Those eggs are a pain in the butt to hatch. So I have a solution for you. <laughs> <laughs> this one weird trick. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to use a different website, um, specifically made for Pokemon. Much mm, success. Yeah, <laughs> much success. Um, and so this takes in a um, URL, actually, of directions from Google Maps. So you go, you click on directions, click on a point A, wherever you want. So we're going to go from the ferry building to here. Click walk, otherwise you'll move really, really quickly. <laughs> and it'll defeat the purpose. And we're going to copy this URL, then we're going to go to the maps thing, pop it in there. Pretty much don't have to worry about anything else. And we're going to click on Let's Go. And it's going to do the same thing. It's going to generate a nice little file for us. And it downloads. Like I said, I rename them because like that means nothing to me. Great. Now we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to launch the app. And oh, that's one thing. You have to um, wait till the app is running on your phone for the little uh, GPS indicator thing to pop up. So, just give it a second here. There we go. I'm going to add in Embarker. Alright, just give it a second. Hopefully, I won't get banned. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and oh shoot. <laughs> yeah. So the problem is now, <laughs> if I unplug it, it's not going to walk around. But like, what it's doing right now on my phone is literally like walking around <laughs> in in Google Maps too. Like my the dot is moving and it's following the path that you said. Um, but like if I un if I unplug it to show you, it's gonna stop moving. But I, mean, I guess it could try. No, it should. <laughs> I promise. You this. <laughs> Just it's loading. It's loading. Just give me a second. The app takes a very long time to load. It's still loading. Remember. <laughs> so good. <bad. laughs> See? I'm walking. So you took a picture of it so it looks like it's standing. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can clearly see it's walking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh shit. Interesting. So I unplugged it and she went back to the forest. <laughs> so now I'm definitely banned. <laughs> yeah, that's that's another thing that you have to be careful with. So when you're like teleporting around, <laughs> um, you, you want to make sure to close the Pokemon app before changing locations. Otherwise, um, I don't know exactly what their like criteria are for figuring that out, but like if you move too quickly between two points, they somehow can tell and it flags you. And so what happens is you get soft banned, which means uh, basically you can open the app and um, you can walk around to hatch your eggs, but you can't catch Pokemon and you can't get any items from Poke Stops. Um, two to four hours. Oh. No. It's worth it. I've been pan banned multiple times. <laughs> totally. <fine. laughs> Very proud. Um, so that's basically it. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that, um, let's go back. Google Maps. Um, when you make a path like this, um, it'll walk it, and but then once it gets to the end, it's gonna restart from the beginning. So if your um, start and end point are too far away from each other, it'll count as like teleporting, and it'll catch it and, and ban you. 
So um, a good strategy for that is to, yeah, exactly. So you just add a, add a wait, oh my god, I can't right click on this. So you add a destination, and then you make your end point like close to your beginning point, so you have a loop. And so you'll just keep walking in a circle for <laughs> until your phone runs out of memory <laughs> and fries. <laughs> And so is that just to hatch eggs, or do you actually catch stuff as you walk? No, no, you can you can absolutely catch stuff. Um, you won't stop though while you're catching Pokemon, so <laughs> it's easy to get behind. Like you're like, oh, I really want this one Pokemon, and then it gets away, and then you've missed like three or four Pokestops. So that's kind of annoying. But and it's annoying like when you walk by gyms and you want to battle because you have to like be physically next to them. But otherwise, it's super useful. Like, we catch a ton of Pokemon, especially if your loop is relatively small. Um, so Damien actually showed me this originally, and, oh my god. No, Max, but, no, how do I zoom, zoom out? Okay, whatever. So Damien showed me this little spot in Santa Monica. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he showed me, where is LA? Santa Barbara, there we go. In Santa Monica, there's one little tiny pier in Santa Monica. And there are like 10 pokey stops on this pier. And so if you just walk, oh my god, from like one end over here to the other end and back for like two or three hours, you'll catch all the Pokemon you could ever want. Yeah. I leveled up like six levels in one day or something, something crazy, like, on this pier. Because there's just lures everywhere. So for those who don't know. Yes. <laughs> so on Pokestops, you can um, put these items called lures on them, and they attract Pokemon. And so one person puts them down, and for half an hour, like, ba basically everybody, like, reaps the benefits. And you can tell their lures oh, by um, when they have flowers on them like this. That means like Pokemon are more likely to get go there, and like you'll catch rarer Pokemon and things like that. Um, so the entire pier is covered in Pokestops stuff like that all day, every day. I don't know. It's it's all the like actors and actresses, because <laughs> you have to buy them in the game, wasting their money. <laughs> what? They're starving actors and actresses. There's plenty of rich people in LA. Yeah. <laughs> I, I promise. Um, so yeah, that is basically that. I do have another hack that I actually found yesterday, but it is far less safe, and um, you do it not out of the App Store. So I will not do that on camera. If you would like to see, I'd be more than happy to show you. That's <laughs> not recording. What? It's not recording. <laughs> no, it's and it's all on the phone too. Um, basically, you just download a third, like three third-party apps, and it, yeah. But so it's really cool because they somebody like made a joystick in the game. Right, I'm still gonna have to whatever. Um. <laughs> I, I just won't show it to my aunt when they hire me. <laughs> Exactly like Pokemon Go, right? And so it's telling me this hasn't been trusted, which is probably for the best, but you know, <laughs> we'll take a risk. So you go to general, uh, where is it? Ah, profiles and device management. <laughs> See, I have all these weirdo things in here now. Um, so I'm going to verify the app. This is weird because I verified it yesterday, so I don't know what happened. Ah. Oh. Mm. <laughs> and 
tomorrow my phone is going to get taken over by All your data has already been collected. So. Yeah, I know. It's fine. It's not like, oh my god, okay. Well, it's not working. Um, but so basically what it does is it has a little like controller in the app so you can move like in real time. So it's really cool. So you don't have to like go through Xcode and like create new files every time. You can like tap a little button and you'll move in the game. But that is like super, super against all of the rules. And like Xcode is just a cool app. But this is like super against the rules and obviously very insecure on your phone. <laughs> so yeah. do it at your own risk kind of thing. Yeah, so I, I had to download this I, iOS. This, this app is okay. This I checked out and like everyone's like, oh, it's totally fine. It's like just um, a place to get like emulators for different uh, game systems on your phone. Um, so they have like a bunch of different apps, whatever. Do you get that um, one from the App Store? No. <laughs> but Reddit verified it, so. <laughs> then this little bunny thing, I don't know what that's about. <laughs> I had to download it to get to the Pokemon Go app, and then Pokemon Go app, so. Which I'm so bummed that it's not loading. Um, you need it to jailbreak your phone. <laughs> no, this is supposed to work without jailbreaking your phone, which is like one of the perks, I guess. Turning it that way. Um, but, okay. okay. So then, I guess I just wanted to end with a few um, good gaming practices <laughs> for, for Pokemon Go. Um, so, if you're, so, okay. There are some Pokemon that have only one evolution and some that have two. And the way you evolve them is by gathering enough candies to evolve them, and there's a set number determined like in the game. So, um, before, if you have a Pokemon that's going to be leveled up twice, wait until you have enough candies to do both evolutions, because as you catch more Pokemon and are trying to collect all these candies, you're going to be gaining levels. And as you gain levels, the Pokemon that you encounter in the wild are stronger. So if you wait, you're going to end up with a stronger base Pokemon, and then you're going to level it up all the way and end up with a super strong. Um, like third level Pokemon instead of just kind of a crappy one because you leveled up like one of your first Pokemon that you caught. Second tip, turn off the AR. Yeah. It's like, it's totally one of the selling points of the game, right? Because you're like, oh, there's a Pokemon like in my kitchen, whatever. But it wastes your battery like nothing else. And it actually makes it harder to catch the Pokemon because like when you have an AR turned on, they stay in one spot. So like if you move your camera around, they don't move with it, they stay in that spot. If you turn the AR off, the game is in your phone, so you can like, move around and whatever. Um, so yeah, and it's, it's just generally kind of annoying. Okay, third trick. This is a little specific, but so you start the game with an egg incubator, so you have to incubate the eggs to hatch them. So you start with an incubator that has an infinite amount of eggs that you this is like with you forever. And along the way, you pick up incubators that you only use three times. And so, <laughs> to maximize the use you get out of these, put your 10K eggs in the three use ones. So, right, so like you'll get more use out of them, and the smaller eggs in the infinite one, because you'll hatch a ton of smaller eggs in the same time that you hatch one of the 10K eggs. So those are pain in the butt to hatch. It takes forever. 10K is like really far. I don't, it's like, 10 kilometers. Yeah. yeah. It's like, but that's like six miles, right? That's so far. Like, who walks six miles? <laughs> it took me like two weeks to hatch a 10K egg or something like that. Anyway. It's not as bad if you didn't have to leave the app on in order for those like miles to count. It's, you actually walk a lot. But. Yeah, and the, like the GPS isn't like sophisticated enough to see you like walking back and forth in a building or something like that, you know? So like walking to and from school <laughs> is basically all the walking that I did, right? So it was like maybe a kilometer a day. <laughs> so it took forever. Um, and my last tip is that, so there's this item called the lucky egg, which will double the experience points you get, and that's how you level up as a trainer, is through experience points. And you get them through like 
using Pokestops or catching Pokemon, whatever, um, and, and evolving them is one of the best ways that you can get them. And so, around here, like, Everywhere, there's just a ton of like these smaller level Pokemon, like Zubats and Pidgeys, which probably means nothing to you guys. <laughs> they're everywhere, and they're super annoying, and they're super super low level. But so what you do is you collect just a ton of them, and then you use a lucky egg, and you evolve like 10 or 15 of them, and that translates into like thousands and thousands of experience points. So you level up super quickly. And the more you level up, the stronger and cooler Pokemon you get so you want to do it as quickly as possible. And so these are the sites that I use. That last one is where you download the stuff on your phone. But we, we don't we don't worry about that. <laughs> That's it. I hope you learned more than you ever wanted to know about Pokemon. <laughs>